Hello everyone, this is DJ Anderson and I have a video for you today. I've seen a lot of questions on how to do small satin stitch lettering and wanted to shoot a video, talk about some of the things that we have to keep in mind when we're doing small satin stitch lettering and some techniques that will help you to accomplish um, what you want to achieve with your lettering. So on the screen you can see that I have a little list here of the key factors that we need to keep in mind when we're doing small satin stitch lettering. And when we're talking about small satin stitch lettering, we're talking less than a quarter of an inch tall letters. So this is going to be um, very small and, and about basically four millimeter height lettering, which is very small. So some of the things that we have to keep in mind is the width of the column. So whenever you're doing a satin stitch, you want to try to keep it um, the width from one side to the other about 1.4 millimeters in width. And um, if you're doing it onto woven fabric, you can get down to maybe about a 1.2, but if you're on a knit, definitely stay at the 1.4. Then opening size is another thing that we talk about. And what that means is like in the letter um, E here in the word density, it would be the hole inside of the letter E or the letter O or letter A. We wanna make sure that there's enough width there that it won't close up. So we need at least 0.8 millimeters to make sure that it doesn't close up. And so I'll show you what that looks like. The other thing is we don't want to have too much density. Density is not our friend when we're doing small satin stitches. So we don't want to have too much of that or it causes a lot of problems like bird nesting, thread breaks, things like that. So we definitely have to keep that in mind. The other thing is underlay. Underlay is something that we don't really utilize when we're doing small, very small satin stitch lettering. And the reason is because it has a tendency to kind of poke out of the edges and it can create a little bit too much bulk. Um, it's just not necessary when you're doing really small um, satin work. So the other thing that um, we do is we look at the travel stitches and travel stitches just mean from one object to another, um, we want to kind of path so that we're not jumping um, or trimming. We want to utilize a pretty small stitch length for our travel stitches and I try to keep it around 1.5 and again that's just to prevent it from poking out of the sides of the satin because we're dealing with a really narrow um, satin stitch. So the other thing that we do is we try to eliminate as many trims and lock stitches as we can. When we're doing small lettering it's pretty um, the letters are pretty close together and you don't really need to trim between the letters because you really can't see it and anytime you do a trim it can cause issues when you're stitching out and that's what makes a lot of small detail work not look as good it kind of makes a kind of a, like a blob and so we're gonna try to minimize the trims and locks as much as possible so how small can you go with a satin stitch lettering? And the it's really gonna come down to some of these factors like the width of the column that we can use and the opening sides of the letters like the A, E, O, um, letter D, um, just those that have a little hole in them, we need to make sure that we can um, have enough distance there. and. And that's really the kind of the main things is just to, how wide we can make each letter. And should you use thinner thread, like a standard thread is 40 weight thread that most people use for the majority of their work. And thinner thread would be like a 60 weight. And 60 weight is much thinner and um, it's used a lot of times for small lettering. And when you use the 60 weight, it's often accompanied with a smaller needle like a 65 9. I typically use 40 weight thread with a 75 11 needle and that's what I use for the majority of everything I do. So you can accomplish small lettering like what we're going to talk about today using a standard 40 weight thread 
and a 7511 needle. Um, you can get crisper letters if you use a smaller one. I just don't like to switch out the needles and the thread that much. So I try to do what I can to keep using the same um, thread weight. And we'll look a little bit at how to fix keyboard lettering um, to make the small satin stitches work because they're not really digitized for small um, lettering. So I'll show you some tricks for that. And then we'll look at how to properly create small stitches, satin stitches manually. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, a few things here. So I'm gonna grab my text tool. Um, this is just keyboard lettering at this point. And I'm going to type in small satins and I want to show you that with Floriani software at least um, and you might have a different program but a lot of them do come with smaller fonts and um, in the Floriani software you have this like um, category of fonts and if I click on it I can choose small and this is going to load all of the small fonts that are available inside of the Floriani software so if I click this down arrow after selecting small here you'll see that I have a number of options and they range from three millimeters in height all the way up to I think seven right here is the tallest and I'm just gonna go to this line block and this is a run stitch font but this is about as small as we can go um, when we're creating lettering and so I typically do it myself um, the lettering with uh, run stitches but I just want to show you I'm zoomed in 100% you can see how small that is that's utilizing run stitches and so let's come back to the text tool and let's click here and let's take a look at one of the small fonts that's a satin stitch so let's come in here and let's go ahead and Do the solid four millimeter and hit apply. Now this you'll see is pretty small too. So let me go ahead and let's type in the same thing. Say small satins and hit apply. So this automatically loads the font at this size. So when you're dealing with really small fonts inside the Floriani software they're made to run at a very specific size and again this is four millimeters so that's how you know um, what you're using here let me go ahead oh, there's another one here right here this Elena four millimeter let's go to that one because that one is actually a little bit smaller and this one let's make this a four millimeter line font and you can see that's pretty close here so we have two different versions one is a run stitch font and one's a satin and the one thing that I want to point out with the fonts that come with the software when they're digitized to to run small you'll notice that they are definitely digitized different and for instance this letter a you'll notice that there's like this run stitch um, bar on the a and then it's using satins here. So every so often you might see these little run stitches and that is to make sure that this hole here stays open and doesn't shut. So um, these fonts are made to run at the exact size that, they're, that they are, four millimeter. You don't wanna make them bigger. You don't wanna make them smaller. They're made to run at this specific size. So I wanted to point that out and you'll notice too that the S's are you know kind of open at the edges it's not really curved up too much so that is a standard font what um, I like to do is I don't there's not much that you can change or that you should change with these but I definitely come in here to where it says trim type and it says always I change that to auto and I change the lock type to only put a lock around a trim and that's just to make sure that it's jumping between letters 
and even in this case the word I don't want it to trim it just makes a mess um, if it's visible after I stitch it out I can cut between um, I can cut between the L and the S with some snippers and and uh, that's how I would approach that um, now let's go back to the text tool and let's just bring in a regular font and I'll type in the word small satins and at the same time I'm gonna bring in some lower uh, I'll bring those in separately so let's go ahead and hit apply here I'm gonna come in and go to block fonts and I'm gonna find a block font um, let's do solid let's take a look at that and I'm gonna change this height to four millimeters so I'm gonna bring this in pretty small here and you can see that when I do it comes in and you can see how this is created now one of the things that I'll point out right away is uh, the one of the things that I noticed that makes it not quite as good of a candidate for small lettering is the way that this S bends up quite a bit notice that on this one that was digitized to run small notice it's kind of open right here um, that's gonna help in the stitching out to keep it looking nice and clean so I can bring in this font and I can you know make it four millimeters but it doesn't mean that it's actually gonna run great but let me go ahead and let me bring in some lowercase letters as well so I'm gonna bring in a B D E G O, P, and Q. The reason I'm bringing these in is because I want to um, focus on this font that has um, lowercase because these opening sizes here are much smaller. So we're at a four millimeter. I'm probably gonna make this about a five millimeter because that's just too small for lowercase that looks a little bit closer to what it should be and so you can see now I have some uppercase and just so you know you most definitely want to utilize uppercase letters when you're going this small it just is so much um, cleaner um, you'll get better results and so I do highly recommend to use uppercase letters when you're doing stuff that's five millimeters or smaller so with this lettering I'm not going to make any changes I'm just going to keep it like this and so that we can stitch it out and take a look at what it, it um, ends up looking like without making any changes to it so now I'll take this and I'll um, copy and paste these two and I'm going to bring it down and this time I'm going to make some changes to it okay so I want to now take into account the column width the opening size and things like that so that I can try to get the best results possible utilizing a keyboard font because most people will want to try to utilize a keyboard font and not digitize their own so this is what you would want to do if you were going to utilize a regular standard font and you're making a small. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this small satins and I'm going to come over to my properties box in the text extra I'm going to choose auto and around trim for the trims and jump stitches and lock stitches and that's just like the others um, when I did that this time I'm going to change the density so I'm going to change this up to um, a 0.6 and hit apply and this is going to really lighten it up as you can see um, 
Let's go ahead and just do 0.5 just because. Now I'm zoomed in 352%, so keep that in mind. It's not gonna look as open as what you see here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow my other instructions of taking away the underlay. So I'm gonna remove that underlay, and now I'm just left with um, these satin stitches, with no underlay, and you can see it, it doesn't look too impressive right here. Um, the other thing I have to do, let me take that away again, and let me zoom in here. I want to get the width of these columns to about 1.2. Let's just assume I'm going to put this onto a um, woven fabric. So I need to add 0.2 millimeters of width to each side so I can do that using pull compensation. So if I come over to pull comp, I can come over here and do an absolute value of 0.2 and hit apply and that's going to add 0.2 to both sides. So if I come back in and measure this, now I'm going to be at about 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. So you get a better idea of what that looks like. And you can see that um, in doing this, if I zoom out, things are kind of bunched up together, but you have to take into account that um, it's going to pull inward, so it's not going to look as closed up as it, it appears to be in here. Um, but now we know that we have the right width to these letters. And the only other thing that I would really um, do here is I might come in and edit this a little bit. Um, I'll edit the text. Some of the things I would do is probably separate the I from the T and the N a little bit. Give it a little bit of distance there. I might bring this T in a little bit closer. Um, not doing too much, just uh, provide a little bit of space here. And so that's pretty much um, what I can do to keyboard lettering to get it more ready for um, doing the small of lettering. So again, I made sure the column width was 1.4 millimeters wide. I made sure that the d um, density was um, lighter, like about a 0.5 on this one. Um, I'm turned off the underlay and that's and then I focus on the lock stitches now the only other thing that I would do at this point for this type of lettering is I really want to address this area right here this is that opening size we want about 0.8 millimeters right and this is about 0.5 so in order to make that change, I'll need to select um, just this A and work with it, but I can't when it's keyboard lettering. So what I have to do is break it apart. So I'm gonna break it apart. So right click and break up the text. And by doing that, you'll see that now over here, I have the individual letters. And if I select that A, now I can come in, but you'll notice that it's still, this is two different pieces that are combined together. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna break it apart again so that I can access just this piece right here. And this is a trick that um, you definitely want to utilize when you're doing small lettering is you're gonna to wanna to bring this down. You're gonna to wanna to bring it down some. And the reason is, is you wanna give yourself more room here. So just by bringing that down, it's gonna open it up some. I can do the same thing over here. I can select this, right click and break it apart. And that's again, after I already broke up the text and I can bring this down and that's gonna open it up. So that um, will help in that area. So now I need to address the lower case here. So if I kind of uh, measure this, we're at about, um, Again, it's about a 0.8, so I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna go through those same um, settings here. So text extra, I'm gonna choose auto for trim and around a trim for the lock. I'm gonna come into my density, 
and I'm going to make this a 0.5. I'm going to come to my underlay and turn it off. And then I'm going to come to my pull compensation and I need to make this wider um, by 0.4 millimeters. So if I add 0.2 to each side, I can hit apply and that's going to make it now wide enough. And let's go ahead and just take a, a look at some things. So right here we have not much room here. So this has a is going to have a tendency to kind of close up and we'll stitch it out so you can kind of see. Um, some of the things that you can do when you're working with text like this is you can stretch it out. So we'll do that in the in the next one. Um, what I want to do is just show you this same um, text here but manually digitize. So um, let me let me go ahead and do this though. Let me go ahead and stretch this a little bit. Um, this is just a trick that you can use, you know, to to give yourself a little bit more room. Um, so now let's go ahead and look at manually digitizing it ourselves. So if we're going to manually digitize it, we want to work with a font that will give us the best opportunity to bring out the clarity of the lettering. So I'm going to come up to my text tool. I'm going to bring in some true type text and I'm going to type in small satins and I'm going to come over here and, and I'm going to go to try to find a font that will give me the kind of look that that I want. So give me a second here to kind of locate one and um, so a font that I think is going to work good is the Calibri font. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to bring in this word small satins and you can see it brings it in kind of big. I can come in here and I can resize this. Um, I could come up here and uh, do it by having it selected right there. Um, I can come into millimeters and for the height I could just type in four and hit apply and that should make it pretty close to the same size here. See it's a little bit smaller if I make this a little bit larger here. It's a little bit closer. So one of the things that you can do with um, working with artwork is I can come in here and I can measure the width and you can see that I'm at about a 0.6. So if I select all this and I come over here to pin width, let's just try to type in a 0.4 and let's see what happens here. If I come back in here and measure, I'm at about a 1, 1 1.1. So if I come back to here, maybe let's try a 0.5 pin width. And let's come back in here and measure. And let's just see how wide we are. We're about a 1.2. So by doing that, now I have the width that I need for this satin. And for this part, the the A, B, D letters. I'm going to bring in another true type font here. and But I'm not going to use the same one because I really want to find one that has an A like what you see on the screen. Um, because not, I mean a different type of A. Because um, it doesn't give us much room when we're doing an A that's in this style. So I'm going to find a different one. I'm going to select and I think this one has the different style of A here. Yep, so it's a little bit bigger here. 
it's a little bit more of what I want. So let's come back over here. Oh, I did the width instead of the height. This will probably be a little too small. Yep. So I'm going to make this a little larger here. And that should be pretty good. Let me go ahead and grab these, bring it down some. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I've got this up on the screen. And um, sorry, I didn't move these, so these little pieces should be moved back. I remember they were right even with that. So sorry that this video is a little bit longer, but I think it's important to um, to bring these these uh, points out of working with a keyboard font or manually digitizing. And manually digitizing, in my opinion, is the way to go. And I'm just going to show you a couple letters really quick, and then I'll finish them out, and then I'll bring it back up. So when you're doing this, you want to keep going in a continuous motion as much as possible. So instead of ending the S right here and starting the M here, I'm going to come all the way up, and then I'll run down, do this M all the way through, and then I'll show you how I'm going to do like the letter A. So I'm just going to use a standard um, point, counterpoint, satin stitch here. So um, I think if I just uh, come in here, I just used a keyboard shortcut. Hopefully it's on the right one. Um, I'll find out really quick here. And I'm just going to outline this font, trying to keep it um, pretty close to what you see on the screen. I'm not going to try to make it too perfect, but um, we'll just do this letter S here. And when I get to the end here, I'll right mouse click, and that's created the letter S. Let me go ahead and um, change the color of this artwork. Let's make it a darker color. That way you can kind of see the stitches here. And don't let this concern you too much right here. This will get fixed here in a second. So letter M, what I need to do now is focus on that smaller um, run stitch to go from here down to here. And uh, I need it to be a short stitch length because I don't want it to poke out. Um, or add additional height to just this area. So I'm going to go to my manual run stitch tool, which is this one right here in the Floriani software. I can type in one on my keyboard. And I'm just going to start here, and I'm just going to go about 1 uh, to 1.3 millimeters or so in length, running down to here. Then I'm going to grab my satin stitch again. I just use the keyboard shortcut again. And... Um, I'm going to come up here, and this won't be necessarily identical to the same font, or the font that is there, but I'm just going to go all the way through this, um, and you'll notice that I don't have to run between these areas here because I'm able to um, go straight up that column and straight down, so I do need to change something right here. Um, I need to come in here and change where this one ends. I need it to end over here, so I'll start it over there. But by doing this, um, I ran down to here. That allowed me to go continuous up, continuous down, continuous up, continuously down. So I got through that letter with only having to do that one manual stitch right there. You'll notice that there is some underlay right now. I'm going to turn all that off. But when we get to this point, now I've got to address the letter A. So I want to make sure that this doesn't close up. So I'm going to utilize a manual um, stitch. And I'm going to make this a run stitch across here. 
and the rest of it will be a satin. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab my manual stitch tool and I'm going to start it about right here. I'm going to come up about right here. I'm going to drop one stitch here, drop another stitch over here, drop one here, and back again. And that's going to create a line here and I'm going to come back down to this starting point and now I can just do that let rest of the letter A. So I hope that this makes sense. Um, I'm trying to keep that pretty open um, because I don't um, want it to close up when I stitch it out. So by utilizing that run stitch on that lower part of the A right here, that's going to allow this to stay really open but still make it look like the letter A. So from here, same thing, grab the manual stitch tool and I'm going to come up, I'm going to use about 1 to 1.4 millimeter stitch length by running all the way up to here with a short stitch length that's going to stay there nice and drive into the fabric good and from here I can come in and then digitize all the way through this letter here and um, which is nice so that there is no travel stitches. I can end it off right there. And then the same thing, I can run and um, up to here and go down. Now I'm gonna digitize the rest of these letters. This is just one to show you this area, how to handle it. And I'll bring this back up when I'm done with that. Okay, so I finished digitizing all the letters. I went ahead and did the lower case as well. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at these. Um, you can see that I have these letters here. Um, I made sure that the width of them were correct. I put this part on the lower part of the A, just a manual stitch across. And when I got to these letters over here, um, this other style of an A, which is different from the one that kind of comes across and down, gave me a little bit more width here and but you'll notice that for the E I did use a run or a manual stitch here to go across and then satins and that's just to try to keep it from closing up so other things that I did is I went back in and I turned off all the underlay and so any run stitch you see here is ones that I created using the manual stitch tool only to pass from one letter up to the top of the next. So you can see there's not uh, many of those at all. And so this design is now ready to go. And just to recap, this is a keyboard font that's four millimeters um, in height. And it says small satins, it's just a run stitch. This one is a um, small font that is inside of the software that I can't really make adjustments to. The only thing I did was change so that it wouldn't trim between each letter. This right here is a satin stitch um, font, a regular solid font that I just made smaller. I didn't change anything about it as far as um, the density and things like that. Um, I do want to come in here and do auto and around trim um, because I don't want it to trim too much. And then this lettering, same thing. Um, I just kind of use the default settings for it. And so it does have underlay and all that. So this is just to show you what happens if you make it this small without making any adjustments to it. And then this one is that same font from above, but I've made the column widths wider and I've taken away the underlay. And um, so it's just kind of pathing stitches, but I didn't really have control over those pathing stitches too much because I was using a keyboard font. And the other thing I did is I grabbed these lower parts of this A, I drug it down a little bit so that it could open this area here. and I do need to pay attention to the letter A and the E because there's not much width there. And then I have this lettering down here, which I'm going to go ahead and hide that artwork. 
so you can kind of see it and I just made sure that the width of it was appropriate and by manually doing it I was able to control the travel stitches some and so now it's time to go stitch it out I'm gonna go stitch the design out and then I'm gonna bring it up on the screen so you can see it and keep in mind this is gonna be very small again if I come up here and I do one 100% um, you can see it's a very small font here so I'm going to go ahead and I'll change the colors get it all set up but I'm not gonna make any more adjustments to the actual letters themselves I might put a little bit of spacing between each row and straighten this out but I'm not going to make any other adjustments so I'm going to bring that up on the screen and I'll be back in a minute okay I'm back I've stitched this out and now we're going to take a look at it and I've zoomed this in so you can kind of see this is actually at, at like the size that I have it in front of me it's it's about the size that that I'm seeing this is pretty close right here um, so this is about actual size and you know the if I zoom in it'll start looking more choppy and it will look like it doesn't cover as well as it should or things like that so um, I want you to see what it actually kind of looks like in real size and if I zoom back here this is a pretty good representation of what it looks like but I'll zoom in just a little bit here so if we look at this the small um, satins this is a run stitch font and um, that's what is typically used when you do this size um, it's pretty easy to read I do like to manually do it myself but you can see that it it's pretty legible um, this one right here this was that keyboard font that was digitized at this size now the only thing I'll say about this one is it's really designed to utilize 60 weight thread and I used 40 weight thread and as a result it's pretty dense and it might look like it fills it in really good but when I put my hand over the top of it it's pretty stiff and hard and I did get a thread break as you can see right here in this like letter T um, the other thing is is when you get in there you'll see that it really kind of distorted um, the fabric a little bit it, it kind of the stitches were just too close together that it was starting to kind of tear the fabric a little bit and um, and when you get too much density you start getting more blobs so you can see like in this letter M here you have it's a little bit more of a blob it wanted to close up it did stay open because it used that run stitch that went across and um, you can see these jumps that go up on these letters but for the most part it does look pretty good so if I was using a 60 weight thread I could get away with that um, but this is digitized to run at this exact size so you gotta keep that in mind um, 60 weight thread with that should look pretty good um, this was the standard regular block font where I just resized it but I didn't make any changes to it it's this one right here and you can see it's pretty thin um, if this was going on to a um, knit fabric it would definitely have issues it's a little bit too narrow of a column here um, the machine wasn't that happy when it was stitching it out and just like I thought with the lower case letters here you can see that the opening size wasn't enough so on this A and this E it closed up so you don't see the little dot there and that's just one of the things that happens when um, you try to make it too small and you don't have a big enough opening size the next font is um, the same as the above one um, however it's been modified so added a little bit of width and it's actually a lighter density too I've made this one about a 0.6 density as opposed to a 0.5 um, so I lightened it up and you can see that um, it is definitely thicker but again I'm not really fond of this letter S it comes up it's just not really um, designed to work with a small letter but um, the one thing I noticed when it's stitching out is it's flatter. It might not look like it's flatter, but it definitely is. Um, this, these two kind of 
scrunch up a little bit too much. The only thing I didn't like about this font right here is it had the underlay and that was unnecessary. That probably made it stiffer too. But on this one, it definitely was, um, definitely a smaller, it's definitely flatter. And you can see that the letters come out for the most part pretty good. Um, you still have an issue right here where it closes up. The letter E is a little bit better, but it's pretty much closed up too. So this last one, um, this one right here, is the one that was manually digitized. And um, by doing it manually, was able to really control um, kind of the angles and everything. You can see that it, I used a different style of S that's more similar to this. Um, this one actually stitched out uh, really well. Um, it was, it went much faster too. I noticed as it was stitching out that it actually made it through the letters much faster and I think that's just because it didn't have much density. It didn't have any wasted stitches so it didn't have a lot of extra like pathing stitches and um, it just went from letter to letter all the way through and you'll you can see that on the A and the E, it's opened up on this one, so you can actually read it. And that's some of the advantages of doing it manually, is that you can have better control over the open areas. And so the takeaway from this lesson is you can definitely do smaller satin stitches. You can use keyboard lettering to do it too, you just need to pay attention to some of the details and the details being um, the column width, the opening size, the density, no underlay, and then travel stitches. You can't really control if it's keyboard lettering, but the other big thing is don't have it trimmed between each letter. Make sure you turn off that function. Um, you don't want it to to do that. Now I will say that the best results um, will come with manually digitizing the small letters and really that's just because um, you can control what happens more but you have to be comfortable doing that. So I hope that this lesson helped. Um, you might have to watch it a couple times and I do apologize for the length but um, this one right here uh, did pretty well as you can see um, and that was using keyboard lettering the only thing that I would do different is try to find one that has a different style in the letter S but you can see that if I tweaked it a little bit more and spent more time with it I might have been able to get it to look a little bit better um, the letter A it's hard to find a font that has an A in this style but you definitely want to look for that and um, that would have helped quite a bit. So hope this helps and we'll see in the next video. If you want to learn more about small satin stitches and run stitch fonts and things like that, definitely check out the digitizing masterclass where we discuss everything about digitizing and uh, help you get the skills that you need to be able to create designs your own so that you can create um, your own small lettering with you know confidence and ease because you will understand the rules to digitizing and make sure that you're following those when you're creating your own your own designs and that's what that master class is designed to do is to really help you learn the theory of digitizing to always know what can go wrong and how to prevent things from going wrong and how to fix them if you have some issues that you you come across and the digitizingmasterclass.com it's www.digitizingmasterclass.com and um, if you're already a member of it thank you and um, hopefully you're on your way to creating your own lettering and getting the results that you want so until next time we'll see you